be in Colossians chapter 1. Be finishing up on the uh, two Gospels this morning. And, uh, it's important to understand this. You know, uh, a lot of people don't, don't, they don't understand what the Bible is. They don't understand how the Bible operates. The Bible's a living book. Amen. Uh, Paul tells you that Moses' ministry, the Old Testament, was the ministry of condemnation and death. <clears throat> and so when you read the Old Testament, the Old Testament is going to work condemnation and death in you. I've read the Old Testament many times, Bill. By the time I get to Malachi, I'm so ready for the book of Romans, I can't <laughs> stand it. Yeah. But Paul said that his ministry was the ministry of grace and life. Yeah. He, he was given the ministration of the Spirit. Yeah. And uh, you got to understand how the Bible operates. And uh, we've been looking at, at what the Bible calls the covenant of circumcision. And we've been going through a Bible timeline, and we've, we've went from, from the dispensation of innocence when, when Adam was innocent before he fell. God dealt with man as an innocent creature. They, they had access to the tree of life, all these things. The moment Adam sinned, God cut off access to the tree of life, and he, he, he judged all mankind and condemned them to death that very moment. We're going to look at that this morning in Romans 5, where, where Paul said, By one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Yeah. And, and God no longer dealt with man as innocent. And then you come to the dispensation of, of, of conscience, before the law, when God dealt with man based on his conscience, his knowledge of good and evil, we know how that worked out. Man, the imagination of his heart was only evil continually. God wiped him out with the flood. Yeah. Then you come to the dispensation of government where God gives man the right to govern and, and, and to take uh, uh, shed blood. With, if any, if, if, if uh, man shed any man's blood, whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. So God institutes government, the nation. Then in chapter 17, God comes along and he calls, chapter 12, he calls out a man named Abraham. And in chapter 17, he makes a covenant with this man called the covenant of circumcision. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul, uh, the, the writer there, look over in Genesis 17 real quick. you got to see this, folks. You know, somebody like Stephen Anderson will come running around and say, oh, a, a real Jew is one circumcised in his heart and all this other nonsense. <laughs> I know that says that in Romans chapter 2, but that ain't, you're not, you have no part in that circumcision. Amen. That has nothing to do with you. Right. Now, Paul said, or, or Moses here in Genesis 17, <laughs> verse 9, And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Mm -hmm. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. Now you know what Paul said about the circumcision in Philippians? He said, if any man hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I'll move. Yeah. He said, he said, I, he said, I, he said, circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, <laughs> of the tribe of Benjamin. But you know what Paul said about it? He said, all those things that were gained to me, I counted loss for Christ. Amen. Yeah. Paul suffered the loss of this circumcision for what he now had in Christ. Amen. We're going to see this here this morning, but look at what he says in verse 11. You shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old, that's the number of new. Eight is a number of new. Now, if you, you see what God's showing here, that out of Abraham, a new seed is going to come. And that seed is Christ. But he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money or any stranger which is not of thy seed, he that is born in thy house and he that is bought with money must needs be circumcised, and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And if any man ain't circumcised, he's cut off from his people. That's what the next verse said. Hey, why? He's broken my covenant. Now listen, now listen, folks. This is called the covenant of circumcision. Now, 
In Galatians 2 7, what you do with my big marker, Gary? Huh? In Galatians 2 7, we've been looking at it. Paul said, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision, what is that? Well, obviously, it has nothing to do with the circumcision of Genesis 17. Yeah. yeah. Amen? Right. Sure. Amen. God said if a man was uncircumcised, he's broken my covenant, he should be cut off from his people. But there is a gospel of the uncircumcision. Yeah. What does that mean? It means it's apart from circumcision. Paul said when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was committed unto Peter. For he that wrought, for he that, that wrought effectually in Peter for the ministry, for the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the heathen. Okay? So two gospels. Yeah. Listen, man, do words mean anything? Are these two things the same? No, no, no. People see that word right there and they lose their head. That's right. Amen. Gospel, there's only one. You know, that's like a jar of mustard. Mm -hmm. A jar of ketchup. Well, they're the same. <laughs> gospel of the kingdom. Gospel of the grace of God. They're the same. <laughs> gospel of the uncircumcision. Gospel of circumcision. They're not the same. These two things can't get any different. Amen. Right, amen. Right. Unc uncircumcision is the opposite of circumcision. And there's a gospel of the uncircumcision and a gospel of the circumcision. Yes. Now here in Colossians chapter, you have to understand, folks, that a big part of your New Testament, a big part, at least half of your New Testament, relates to the gospel of the circumcision. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if you don't understand that, you're going to get messed up. That's right. Yeah, right. They can, what, what the gospel of the circumcision is, it's about the promises made to Israel in the covenant of the circumcision. And these promises are confirmed in the Lord Jesus Christ that that were promised all the way back there in Genesis chapter 12 through 22. God calls it, Paul calls it the dispensation of promise. Yeah. Every heresy, baptismal regeneration, where does a man go to teach those things? <laughs> Let me ask you. I know the verses they use. Matthew 28, Mark 16, Acts 2, yeah. 1 Peter 3, 21. The like figure which baptism doth also now save us. Yeah. Peter wrote that. 1 Peter 3.21. Yeah. Mark 16. He that believeth and is baptized yeah. shall be saved. Yeah. Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized. Yeah. Every one of those was spoken to the circumcision and is a part of the gospel of the circumcision. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen bro. Mm -hmm. Church of Christ, you know what they're doing? Preaching the gospel of the circumcision in the wrong dispensation. There you go. Amen. Pentecostals. You know, speaking in tongues the moment when you receive the Holy Ghost. You know what that is? That's part of this program here. It has nothing to do with this. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Every heresy and false doctrine today comes from not rightly dividing these two That's gospels. Right. Amen. Amen, bro. It's that simple. Is tongues in the people say, you don't believe tongues is in the Bible? Of course I do. What, do you think I ain't read the book? <laughs> think I didn't stumble upon that? <laughs> well, you don't believe water baptism is in the Bible? Of course I do. I've read the book. Amen. What I've done is I've studied and I'm able to rightly divide these things. Amen. God's program for Israel and his program for the church. I can rightly divide these things. Now listen, when you get these two Gospels rightly divided, you have to understand, we're going to look at this in some, that's, uh, during the Sunday morning service, God, Paul says that God will establish you according to His ministry. Amen. Not Peter's. Right. You cannot be established by this today. That's right. People who's constantly worried that they can lose their salvation, people that are constantly doubting their salvation, people that never grow up in the Lord is because they're trying to be established in something that God isn't doing today. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen. 
You want to overcome sin? It's going to come through Paul's ministry. In this program, God fills you with His Spirit and causes you to keep His ways. That's not how He's operating today. Amen. That's not how He's operating. Under this program, you need not that any man teach you. Under this program, God gave you pastors and teachers for the perfecting yes, of the saints. Amen. They're yes. two different programs. Yeah. Amen? Yep. And we're going to see all this, but, but Paul said in Romans 16 that God's power to establish you is according to His gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Well, who's the mystery given to? Paul. Paul said, he said, if you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God given to me for you, what was it? How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men. Amen. If you want glory today, it's going to be through Paul's gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Yeah. All right, now look here in Colossians chapter 1. I kind of went over this son of dad's church, but it, I, I want to conclude these two Gospels, the reason I'm, I'm going over this Gospel of the circumcision and the Gospel of the uncircumcision is, is we, we've, we've come to the dispensation of promise. God's going to keep every promise He made to Abraham. Every one of them. Israel's going to be a great nation. Through Israel, all families of the earth are going to be blessed. They're going to get that land. God's going to make an everlasting covenant with them. With them. But these things is not what God's doing today. You're not a part of Israel. Amen. You have no part in those things. Yes. God prepared something greater for us. Amen. 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 And we're going to see that. And Jew and Gentile can get into this thing. Yes. Amen. Israel ain't cut off from this. Paul said if God cast away his people, God forbid. For I also am, a, 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 am an Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin. He said even so at this present time there is a remnant according to the election of grace. The election of grace is what Paul talks about in Ephesians, that God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world. He said, he said, he said that He saved us not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ before the world began. And so these, you have Jews being saved today, not according to the covenants of promise and the covenants of circumcision, Jews are being saved today according to the election of grace. Yes, They're yes. being made a new creature in Christ. Yes, There's neither Jew nor Greek. Yes, Amen. Now look at Colossians 1.16. This is the mystery of God's will. Right here. You get focused on God and what He's doing, and things will get straightened out. Yes, sir. If you focus on yourself and, your, and put your... The center of everything God's doing is Jesus Christ. Yeah. God's going to do something through Christ in heaven. He's going to do something through Christ in the earth. Yeah. Right? Now look at what he says in verse 16, Colossians 1, 16. For by him, that's Christ, were all things created <coughs> that are in heaven and that are in earth. You see that? That's how your Bible begins. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now Paul says right here that by Christ were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. <coughs> Visible. Which one do you think that one is? Heaven or earth? <laughs> Visible. And what? Invisible. Whether they be <coughs> thrones, <coughs> dominions, principalities or powers. You see that? We're not talking about people. We're talking about dominions, thrones, principalities, powers. Now, in, that means in, in heaven and earth, in both of these, these realms, the heavenly and the earthly, earthly realm, there are dominions. Now, people, people got these weird ideas of heaven. Uh, of heaven. There are dominions in the heavens. Yeah. Now Satan was a ruler. He, he was one of the principalities in these dominions. The Bible said that he defiled his sanctuaries through his traffic. Yeah. Now, now that means Satan uh, 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 was given dominion over these principalities and he corrupted that dominion he was over. Mm -hmm. 
Alright? There are thrones. When John goes to heaven, you know what he sees? He sees around the throne of God 24 thrones, 24 seats, mm -hmm. and 24 elders. There are powers. That's kind of like your, you know, a principality would be like a king. The powers would be the people under him that carry out his will. So you have principalities, powers. But Paul is talking about a heavenly and invisible dominion and government and an earthly visible dominion and government. Now what was it created for? Look at verse 16. All things were created by him. That's Christ. And for him. The heavenly dominion and the earthly dominion was created by Christ and for Christ. Yes. Now, here's the thing. Before man was created, Satan fell up here in the heavens. <clears throat> God put a man on the earth, gave him dominion over the earthly realm. Yeah. Satan come down, tempted man, the earthly realm fell. Neither one of these is being used for Jesus Christ today. Right. Yeah. Mm, amen. You know what the Bible says? Read right Ephesians 6, 12. That we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Is that earthly? Yeah. Is that visible? Yeah. He said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. That means there is in the heavenly realm right now spiritual wickedness. Revelation 12, John said, I saw a great sign in heaven, a great wonder in heaven, a great red dragon having seven heads, seven crowns, or seven, uh, seven heads, seven crowns, and ten horns upon those heads. That's a heavenly dominion in the heavenly places that is against God. He's an adversary. Yeah. You know what the Bible said about the earth? Calls it the present evil world, Galatians 1-4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This world right here is not subjected to Jesus Christ. Right. And it won't be until He comes. Amen. That's right. Amen. Psalm 2, 1 through 6 says, Why do the heathen rage? Mm -hmm. And the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us cast away their cords and break their bands asunder. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. He shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet I've set my king on my holy hill of Zion. Yeah. That's when Christ comes back and gets the earthly kingdom. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right, look down in verse 20 now. So th th you have to understand this is the context of what Paul's talking about. Look at verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. God's made peace through the blood of his son's cross by him, by Christ, to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth, or things in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now Paul's not talking about people there. Verse 21 he says, And you who were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. But the, the context of verse 20 is things in heaven and things in earth. You see that? Mm -hmm. People come to this verse and they try to teach universal redemption. That God's going to redeem all men to himself. You know what ain't mentioned here? Things under the earth. Paul said every knee is going to bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father of things in every knee in heaven, every knee in earth, and under the earth. Yeah. Now Paul's just talking about here God gathering anything that God wants out of his kingdom he's going to throw under the earth. But he's going to gather everything in heaven and earth into his son and reconcile it back to himself. So what Paul's talking about here is God is going to reconcile these heavenly dominions, thrones, principalities, and powers. He's going to reconcile them to himself. He's going to reconcile the earthly dominions, thrones, principalities, and powers. One day China is going to be under subjection to God. Yeah. One day Egypt is going to be, and Saudi Arabia and Iraq, the whole Middle East, the whole Islamic Middle East is going to be under subjection to a Jewish king one day. Yeah. America is 
isn't going to be run by, by it's going to be under subjection to Israel. Mm -hmm. That's God's plan for the earth. The point I'm making is this. Paul calls this in Ephesians the mystery of God's will. He's now, he, he's going to reconcile the heavens. He's going to reconcile the earth. Then in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he's going to gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Revelation 21, I, John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Yeah. For the first that passed away. When God has reconciled both these realms back with himself, he creates a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, and this kingdom spreads forevermore. Amen. That's the mystery of God's will. Now, what does this all mean? What does this have to do with anything we're talking about? The gospel of the circumcision, gospel of the uncircumcision. Folks, this clearly tells you what I just read you in Ephesians 1.20, clearly tell or Colossians 1.20. Clearly tells you that Christ has a heavenly ministry and an earthly ministry. One ministry, he's reconciling these heavenly dominions back to God. And in his earthly ministry, he's reconciling the earthly dominions back to God. So Christ has a physical, visible, earthly ministry. Christ has a spiritual, heavenly, uh, uh, invisible ministry. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. And it ain't hard to figure out what's what when you start reading that Bible. Let me let you in on some strong meat. Mm. You ready for some strong meat? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> let me get my legs going. When Christ is fulfilling this ministry, he's on the earth. Yeah. When he's fulfilling this one, he's in heaven. Wow. That just blew your mind, didn't it? That's hard, that's hard to figure, isn't it? Now listen, man. Listen. If you understand what I just told you, that, that Christ has a heavenly ministry and an earthly ministry, if you understand that, you're farther ahead than if you'd spent seven years in Bob Jones University. Yeah. Yep. Amen. That cost you a penny, did it? Just an old dime store book. Two verses in Colossians. That's all it took. Colossians 1 16, Colossians 1 20. Now, these two ministries are revealed in those two gospels that we talked about this morning. The gospel of the circumcision that was given to Peter. Peter is the apostle of this right here. You got that. The gospel of the uncircumcision was given to Paul and it concerns this ministry right here. Yeah. You got that? You say, how do we know which one we're part of? Or are you, are you Israel or not? <laughs> Amen. These two ministries are revealed in two gospels. The earthly ministry was committed to Peter. The 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 <coughs> Heavenly ministry was committed to Paul. The earthly ministry concerns the circumcision. The heavenly ministry concerns the uncircumcision. Yeah. The earthly ministry, Christ was risen from the dead to sit upon the throne of David. Amen? And he's going to fulfill this earthly ministry through the born-again nation of Israel. Yep. Yeah. The heavenly ministry, Christ was risen from the dead to become the head of a new creature called the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. There you go. In the earthly ministry, the earthly ministry, look at Luke chapter 1. The earthly ministry. I, and you know, I just don't know what book people read sometimes. I'm Truth be told, most people ain't reading the book. What am I talking about? <laughs> I mean, they run running around saying, God, what, what's your will for my life? They haven't read the Bible in five years. <laughs> you know? God, do you want me to do this or that? They won't read the book if they had to. Look at Luke 1, 67. His father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost. 
because John the Baptist died, and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of who? Israel. Israel. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. Oh, that's us. That's just how people read the Bible. Oh, that's me, and there's me, and this is all about me. <laughs> Israel. His people. That's Israel. Amen. He, and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us, Israel, in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. The revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began. That's right. That's not hard. Did you think you're going to learn it at Wheaton or Fuller or Dallas or Bob Jones? You ain't. They're not going to teach you that. That's right. Now what's going on in America? Don't tell me people subjected to the book. Don't tell me people's wrapped up in the will of God. If people were wrapped up in the will of God, they would know what his meant. The mystery of his will is. Right. Look at what he says. He, he said what he says here. Look, look at verse seventy-one. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. This is Israel to perform the promise made, the the, the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember His holy covenant, the oath which He swore to our father Abraham. Yeah. There it is. Amen. The heavenly ministry, Ephesians chapter 3. Now you just read that. Look at Ephesians 3. Both of these are in the New Testament. People get to the New Testament, they just say, oh, it's all about the church from here on out. No, it ain't. That's right. No, it ain't. Look at Ephesians chapter 3. John the Baptist's dad knew exactly what Christ was coming to do. He knew exactly what his son's ministry was. It was to prepare the way for Christ. Yeah. And Christ was coming to save Israel right. and, to, and, and to fulfill the promises made to the fathers. Look at Ephesians 3. Look there in verse 1. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Yes. Amen. There he is. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, you know what's wrong with people? They haven't heard that. Yeah. That book, that verse has been in a King James Bible for 408 years now. And most Christians don't know that it's there or what it's talking about. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to me for you. There it is. You want God's grace in your life. I, I make this plain and simple. Do you want the grace of God in your life? You better get your nose in Paul's books. Yeah. 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 Yes. If you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to me for you. How that by revelation, look at what he says, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, which in other ages, verse 5, was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I am made a minister. According to what? According to the, to, to, to the grace given to me by the effectual working of His power, unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning hath been hidden God. Yes. See it? Been hidden God from the beginning. What John, listen, the earthly ministry of Christ how he's going to reconcile the earth back to God. That's been spoken since the world began. What the secret was is that God was going to make a new man in his son in the heavenly realms and reconcile the heavens back to himself. Mm -hmm. So here's your New Testament. I'll be done here in one second. Matthew through John. Where was Christ at? On earth or in heaven? Well, that's not hard, is it? What do you think that's about? <laughs> Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth 
as it is where? In heaven. There it is. He comes down here. What's, what's he doing? Romans 15, 8, Paul says, This I say, therefore, that this I say, therefore, that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. He's a minister of who? The circumcision. Yeah. yeah. We go by the words in red. You're, you're, you've lost your mind. <laughs> and listen, man, this is Israel's program. And I'll teach them. I'll teach through Matthew through John. They're the words of God. There's even things in there that you can learn from. There's principles and, and, and all these things in there that, you, that are beneficial to you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But the doctrine is Israel and the earth. Yeah. Amen? Blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. earth. There it is. It's all through there. Alright, now Christ goes to the cross and he dies. You know what Peter gets up and does? <laughs> Acts 2. What's he preach? Ye men of Israel. Yeah. Let all the house of Israel know that this, Je this same Jesus whom you crucified, God hath made both Lord and Christ. What must we do? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. In order for this program to be fulfilled, Israel has to be saved. Yeah. What happens? Well, just the same way they crucified Christ, God gives them one more chance. He says, he says repent and be baptized. Okay, Peter, sure thing. Lock him in jail. Israel rejected this ministry of Christ. Amen. Right. Look at what Peter says in Acts chapter 3. Folks, I'm telling you, if you read and study your Bible this way right here, specifically the New Testament, it's going to open up. Yeah. Hebrews, man. There's, you know, I mean, Hebrews, 1 Peter, James, you can read those books and you're like, aha, there it is. Look at Acts 3, verse 19. Peter's preaching to Israel again. You say, how do you know that? Verse 12. When Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from what? The presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you whom the what? Heaven must receive until the time of restitution of all things spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Mm -hmm. Has nothing to do with the mystery given to Paul. What, John, what Peter's preaching there is the second coming of Christ to the earth. Mm. This is when he comes back to the earth. God raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand and said, The Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. That's when God gives him dominion over the earth. The promises to the nation of Israel... The earthly, the first coming of Christ, they now await the second coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. Israel will not be saved until. Yeah. Paul said, and he said, and so all Israel shall be saved as it is written, out of Zion cometh the deliverer. Yeah. So Israel will not be saved until the second coming. It's why when you read Hebrews, you know what he's talking about? The second coming. You have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. <laughs> Hebrews 12, 28, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. James chapter 5, Be patient under the coming of the Lord. The coming of the Lord draweth nigh. James said that. Behold, the judge standeth at the door. You know what 1 Peter says? You want, you want a good one? 1 Peter 1, 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1, 13. Mm -hmm. That's the grace that's going to come to Israel at the second coming of Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with you. Right. You know what Peter said? 1 Peter chapter 4. The end of all things is at hand. Really? 
That's too imprint 2,000 years ago, Gary. Yeah. Something must have happened. Yeah. 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 You know what 2 Peter's about? 2 Peter, Peter writes, one, that's the last letter he writes. He's getting ready to die. You know what he's doing? He's trying to explain to these kingdom Jews why the kingdom hadn't come yet. Yeah. You know what he points them to in chapter 3? He says, account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Mm -hmm. Even as our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, hath written to you in an epistle. He said, if you want to understand why the kingdom hadn't come yet, you go to Paul. Yeah. That's what he said. I ain't making anything up, folks. You're getting more than what you get in a seven-year uh, doctorate, uh, seven-year doctorate from any seminary in America this morning. Amen. They're not teaching this stuff around the world. Right. First John, you know what he says? Little children, it is the last time, and you know that Antichrist shall come. Yeah. That's First John. Well, that scripture hasn't applied for two thousand years now. There you go. Revelation, you know what he says? Rise. Measure the temple. Revelation chapter 11. Yeah. That has had no application since A.D. 70. Yeah. People just tear through. They're what about Revelation chapter 3? Not worried about it. <laughs> what about Revelation 14? Not for me. That's right. Let me tell you something, man. And I'm closing with this right here. This all, all of Israel's program, Christ came to the earth, Minister to the circumcision. He's coming back to the earth for Israel. Israel gets saved right here and God blesses the earth of the nation of Israel. In Acts chapter 9, Paul's on the road to Damascus. And suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. <laughs> and he tells him, Acts 26, 16, Paul recounts it and he says, he says, and I heard a voice that says, Rise, stand upon thy feet. For, for this cause have I appeared unto thee. Mm -hmm. Where did he appear from? Heaven. Mm -hmm. And for this cause have I appeared unto thee to make thee a minister of the witness, both of the things which thou hast seen and of the things in which I will appear. So Christ appears to Paul from heaven multiple times to make him a minister and a witness of things. Paul receives the gospel by revelation. Yeah. He receives the revelation of the mystery. From Jesus Christ, these things are revealed from heaven to Paul. Amen. What do we learn in those things? Number one, we learn that that salvation is by the grace of God alone through faith. Yeah. Amen. Apart from works, that's the gospel given to Paul. You know what else we learn in those things? The moment you hear that gospel and believe it, you're baptized into the body of Christ by one spirit. Amen. That means our baptism is spiritual, Bill. Yes, sir. It ain't physical. It has nothing to do with the earth. Right. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. You know what else it says? In whom also ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. It's not fleshly circumcision. It's spiritual circumcision. Amen. You know what that Bible said? In Christ there's neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female. That means the body of Christ is spiritual because in the flesh there's male and female. There's Jew and Greek. But in Christ those things see because we are a new man in Christ. We're something spiritual. You know what Paul said? Our warfare is not at earthly. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Where's the realm of our warfare? In the heavenly places against spiritual wickedness. Yep. Or warfare spiritual. <laughs> or weapons. Paul said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty for God. You know what the weapons of our warfare are? They're spiritual. Mm -hmm. God hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. You know where I'm seated this morning? Yeah. In heaven. Yeah. Ephesians 2, 7. And when I get resurrected, boy, 1 Corinthians 15, Paul said that our body, he said, as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the what? Heavenly. That which was natural was first, afterward that which is spiritual. When I'm resurrected, I get a heavenly spiritual body. Paul said, if our earthly home of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building of God 
not made with hands. Yeah. It's not fleshly. It's not made by man. A building of God, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Yeah. Yeah. That's our purpose. That's the gospel of the uncircumcision. Amen. Now listen. God has a purpose for you in the heavens. And I may cover this one more week. God has a purpose for the body of Christ in the heavens. It's to reconcile his heavenly government. Yeah. God wants us to reign in heavenly places. And in order to do that, he, he wants you to have the mind of his son. Christ, God, God wants Christ to fill all things. When you go to the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to be measured. You're, you're, you're going to be judged according to how much of Christ is in you. And depending on how much of Christ is in you, listen, man, Paul said there's vessels of honor, vessels of dishonor. There's going to be members of, members of the body of Christ that are way down on the totem pole that just does what everybody else tells them to do. Yeah, yeah. But them that have the mind of Christ and them that have been found worthy to reign with Christ are going to receive these exalted positions in God's heavenly authority as far as principalities, powers, thrones, <coughs> dominions. That's why Paul said godliness has the promise of the world that now is and that which is to come. We have an eternal life to live after this, folks. Paul told Timothy, lay hold on eternal Amen. life. Yeah. Lay hold on it. It's not about this life. You have a life to live after this. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Man, that's why Paul said, Whatsoever you do, do as unto the Lord, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. Hmm. Boy, I want it, Gary. Yeah. I want it, man. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for another.